Hello and welcome to the basement. My name is Doug, K4DSP is my ham radio call sign. And today we're going to talk about the use of a transverter with the uh, Flex 6000 series transceivers. And, and not just any transverter, but specifically one that's available for a fairly low price from UT5JCW from the uh, website transverters-store.com. I'll put a, a link up there that you can click on. This is a transverter that's a board level product, so it doesn't come as a, a ready to plug in and use uh, device. But it is a completely built circuit board. You don't have to build it. You just have to make the connections to it and mount it in a case. So I'm going to go over what I did to do that, how, how uh, difficult it is, and some things you might want to watch out for. If you're not handy with tools and, and soldering and that sort of thing, you might want to look at some of the other uh, uh, completely assembled units. There are companies like Elecraft and Down East Microwave and some others that make some really nice transverters. But this is an inexpensive product. It's $65 for the board, $10 for shipping from Russia. Uh, it arrived, uh, the one that I bought arrived in uh, about a week. So uh, it's, it's a good option if, uh, if your needs are not uh, particularly uh, leaning towards a really, really you know, ready to use and high performance unit. The performance is good. We'll talk about that. I'll, I'll show you the, the, some of the uh, specifications and what I've measured. The purpose of a transverter is to allow you to operate on a VHF or UHF frequency that's not normally uh, covered or provided by your HF transceiver. This particular product from uh, UT5JCW is offered uh, as a small board level product for 6 meters, 2 meters, 1.25 meters, uh, 70 centimeters. So there's also a 4 meter uh, board uh, for those in countries that have that particular band. The point of a, the point of a transverter is that it translates the VHF or UHF frequencies down to an, a common uh, IF frequency. In this case, it's 10 meters. It's the 28 megahertz band. So you can, for example, put a 144 megahertz signal on the uh, antenna input receive signal. It'll be translated down to 28 megahertz, and you can receive that on your HF radio. Likewise, you can transmit at a low level into this transverter it will mix that signal up to 144 megahertz and provide RF output there. This particular transverter board uh, has, a, has a small PA on it. It's rated at 10 to 15 watts. Uh, for reasons I'll go into later, I don't recommend running at that power level. The transmit signal is not particularly clean there. But I'll show you what you can run it at and what to expect. And, and we'll look at the transmit IMD and on the spectrum analyzer. Kind of give you a feel for what you can expect from this. It's a decent uh, transverter for the money, especially if you don't want to invest a lot of money into a, if you want to find out if uh, you know, VHF and UHF operating is for you. I've uh, been able to do meteor scatter stuff and weak signal uh, uh, two meter CW and sideband with it, so met my needs really well uh, and may be fine for you too. So let's take a look at it, see what it looks like and what you have to do to make it work with the Flex. 6000 series transceivers and smart SDR. Okay, here's what you get when you buy the, uh, the two, uh, two meter transverter. This is the model I've got. You can see here the board is not very large. It's um, a lot of surface mount components except for the some of the coils and the transistor and stuff. But uh, you don't have to adjust any of those or, or wind anything uh, or mount anything. All you have to do is make the connections to the uh, board itself. Those connections consist of the uh, RF output here. This is the 2 meter side. I've used small coax. It's very short run, so the small coax loss is, is negligible. And then also the 28 megahertz uh, input from the rig goes on, on uh, this side. There are plug-in connectors here on the back with really small pins. Um, they include the RF input and output as well as power on this side and uh, the, the PTT input on that side. I elected to solder the uh, coax directly to the pads on the board here and here because I felt like uh, it was a better connection. But uh, So you have uh, on this particular uh, case that I used, I didn't buy the case from uh, UT5JCW, I used my own. Um, I've got the 28 megahertz connector, it's an SO239 going to the radio. This is uh, the 144 megahertz output uh, going to your antenna or uh, in my case to an amplifier after that. Um, 
12 volts DC input, and then this is the PTT input to, uh, to key it. Uh, the uh, RF output is from this device, and it's a FET. It's uh, mounted to a heat sink. In my case, I used a big uh, CPU heat sink from a computer that I uh, a discarded heat sink from a, an old computer. So that's a fairly hefty heat sink. It's actually about, uh, it's about that thick. Uh, it's most of the height of this thing. But um, it's plenty, of, it's, it's got a copper core and it's plenty of heat sink for that. But you need some kind of heat sink and you need some way to mount the board. So that served two purposes. I mounted the heat sink uh, with screws on the bottom and then uh, mounted the board to that. Then uh, I've got a fuse in line. Uh, it may be kind of hard to see, but I've got a fuse in line here and uh, PTT and, uh, and uh, 12 volts uh, going in. So that's pretty much the uh, setup. I put labels on it that I printed on the laser printer for uh, input and output. Um, and we'll talk about uh, how the thing actually works and how you set it up and how you configure the Flex uh, 6000 series and Smart SDR to actually use this transverter. Okay, so once you've got the board mounted in a case and all the connections made, I want to talk a little bit about how it works specifically with the Flex. And also, uh, it's important to note that this transverter is not meant to be used, uh, the board level product itself is not meant to be used with an HF radio that has uh, a high power output. 100 watt radios are way more drive than you need for this. This board is meant to be driven by no more than 100 milliwatts and I drive mine typically at uh, much less than that. Um, in fact, <laughs> reading, from the, uh, reading from the sheet of information that comes with it, and uh, it, it made me laugh a little bit, but this, uh, this guy's uh, English is obviously much better than my Russian, but the translation goes like this. If you apply more than 0.1 watt to the transverter board from your radio, you instantly get the transverter killed. Um, basically, you don't want to overdrive this, and so that's why you need to use this with a rig that has a transverter output that's low level, typically in the you know uh, plus 10 dBm uh, range and, and below. Now, if you have a rig that's uh, higher power than that, UT5JCW does offer a, an attenuator board to go on the input. That involves some uh, relays and things like that, and you don't need that for the flex, so I'm not going to go into that. If you want to use it with a ra radio other than the flex, uh, you can use that, but that's that's a, a different uh, subject. So we'll talk about how to set it up with the Flex, how to set up Smart SDR, and then I'll show you some uh, typical performance that you can expect from it. The hardware interface between the Flex and the transverter is pretty straightforward. Simply you connect the transverter output. That's the BNC output on the uh, 6300 that I have. Connect the transverter output to the 28 megahertz connector on the transverter. Then you want to connect the uh, TX output of the flex. That's the RCA connector. There's only one of those on the uh, 6300. It's uh, just called TX, but the 6500 and 6700 have multiple TX outputs. You have to choose the one you want to use. But hook the uh, TX output to the PTT input of the transverter and then connect your antenna to the 144 megahertz output of the transverter or if, if uh, you want to drive an amplifier as I do then just connect the uh, 144 megahertz output of the transverter to the input of your amplifier. Okay now it's time to configure the uh, transverter to work with Smart SDR. So once you've launched Smart SDR and it's running you want to go up to settings, check radio setup and uh, click on the transverter tab. Um, You'll see uh, when you do that that if you haven't configured a transverter before, it's blank. So you want to click on the plus sign, and it'll say over here that it's invalid. There's not enough information that's been entered yet to make it uh, work. So the first thing you want to do is give it a name. You can call it uh, anything you want, but it needs to be should be descriptive. So I'm just going to say two meters, two m. And then we want to come down here to the RF frequency. And this is the frequency that the transverter is meant to uh, allow you to operate on. In this case, I've got a 2 meter transverter, so the beginning frequency for that, the lowest frequency that I'm going to operate is 144 megahertz. So that's what I'll enter there. And then uh, 
I'm going to go over here to the IF frequency. This is the frequency that is uh, translated to by the transverter. The one I have takes 144 megahertz, translates it down to the 10 meter band, so we're going to enter 28 megahertz there. Now that that's a linear thing. So if you go to 145 megahertz, you'll I mean you don't change the you don't change the entries here, but 145 megahertz signal into your uh, transverter antenna input will appear at 29 megahertz, 146 will appear at 30 megahertz, and so on. And you may wonder how you're going to transmit with those um, particular constraints uh, because it seems like once you get above 146 megahertz, you're out of band. But the transverter uh, output port, being a low-level output port, doesn't have any restrictions. It can transmit anywhere in the HF band. So uh, to cover 144 to 148 megahertz, assuming you'd like to do both the uh, single sideband and CW portions, as well as the FM portion, requires you to be able to transmit or have an IF frequency uh, of 28 to 32 megahertz, and that's no problem for the uh, flex. So 2 meters would be 144 for the RF, 28 megahertz for the IF. You'll see that it has filled in the local oscillator frequency. That's actually the difference between the RF frequency and the IF frequency. There is an oscillator in the transverter. That, uh, that operates at 116 megahertz, and it's, it mixes with the incoming frequency, whether you're transmitting or receiving. Uh, and as you know, when you mix two signals together, you get uh, either the sum or the difference, depending on which one you want to filter out. So that's, uh, it, it already knows that. Now this local oscillator error has to do with whether your uh, local oscillator has uh, any error in the, you know, it's not a perfect oscillator, it's not exactly on frequency. And I can tell you that with the um, uh, Russian transverter that we're talking about here, that is in fact the case. It's a simple crystal oscillator. It's actually uh, a double doubler, so it uh, it does have some error. It's not exactly on 116 megahertz, but that's okay. We don't need to be able to adjust it. We just need to know how much it's off. There are two ways you can do this. The first one is you can do like I did and measure the frequency of the oscillator with a frequency counter. There is a spot on the schematic that says 116 megahertz, and that's where I actually measured it with my frequency counter, and I saw that I was uh, approximately 1,240 hertz high. So in my case, I knew that, so I can put uh, 1,240 in that box. And uh, I'll, I'll talk about another method for setting that if you don't have a frequency counter. You can actually just adjust this so it matches something that you believe is on frequency like one of your own radios or a local repeater if you're certain that it's uh, pretty close to being on frequency. RX only, we want to disable that because we don't want to just receive, we want to transmit. And in my case, I want to put out one and a half watts because I'm driving an amplifier that only requires a small amount of uh, drive. Uh, so I'm, I found that uh, one, one, dB, one dBm input gives me one and a half watts out and so I'm limiting my maximum output power to one dBm. You may want to change that. Remember uh, you're going to see uh, that, that the transmit signal is not very clean if you over if you drive this uh, transverter too hard. So uh, you, you want to think about what your output power is going to be. And then down here in the RF gain, um, that's that allows you to adjust if your transverter that you're interfacing has gain that allows you to uh, tell it so that uh, Smart SDR can adjust the signal strength, the received signal strength, uh, so that it, uh, the S meter reads correctly. In our case, we're fine with um, the RX gain of 0 dB. As near as I can tell, there's, if there is any gain to the transverter, it's not very much. It hasn't been a, a thing that I needed to uh, worry about. So this is everything you need to make it. You'll now see up here that this says it's valid. Uh, the green box says valid. That means it is now a valid transverter and we can use it. You could click the plus to add another transverter if you had multiple ones. But uh, for now, we're, we're happy with what we got and this should work just fine. Well, once you've configured Smart SDR to use your transverter, there's a couple of ways that you can actually uh, use it. First of all, you can go up to the uh, band uh, tab and click transverter. And two meters, which you can see here. You see now I'm uh, actually setting at uh, 144.2 megahertz down in the sideband CW portion of the band. Um, 
So you can do direct frequency entry if you want to. You can also, uh, if you've saved your uh, two meter frequency as a part of a profile, then you can switch to that profile. I've done that. I'll go down here to uh, two meter FM and single sideband. So now uh, you can see here I have on the top uh, pan adapter, I have the 2 meter uh, sideband frequency 144.2 on upper sideband. Down here on the bottom, I'm actually up in the uh, FM portion of the band set to FM. So I can uh, squelch that, listen to the local repeater or monitor the local repeater for activity and still be monitoring uh, the um, calling frequency for uh, 2 meter uh, single sideband. So that works out really well. Uh, you can, uh, as I said, do direct frequency entry. You can select it from the band uh, menu, and uh, you can make it part of a of a profile as well. One thing that you want to make sure of uh, before you wrap things up is that under settings for your radio setup, uh, you want to make sure that the ability to key that, the uh, TX1 output or the TX output that you're going to use for PTT, is enabled. Uh, otherwise, when you key the mic or, or, or send CW, whichever way you are keying the radio, you won't be able to key the transverter. Other than that, uh, that's pretty much all you have to do. I did mention earlier that if you're, uh, you have some uh, local, uh, local oscillator error that you're not quite on 116 megahertz, that there's a simple way to, to get around that, uh, to calibrate that rather, not get around it. But one thing you can do is if you don't have a frequency counter, you can tune in a local repeater, and if if you believe and, and have good reason to believe that they're very close to frequency, then you can go tune that repeater in and then adjust the local oscillator error. Remember, that was up in settings under transverter. Um, you can tune the, uh, you can adjust the local oscillator error amount until you're exactly on that frequency or until your dial display, uh, displays exactly that frequency. So uh, if you have a local repeater that you believe is uh, very close, or if you have a radio that you believe is very close, then you can calibrate your uh, flex to that, despite uh, whatever LO error you might have in the uh, flex or the uh, transverter itself. Well, several times I've mentioned that the transmit signal on this transverter is not very clean if you run the power up at the uh, 10 to 15 watt level where it's specified. I run mine considerably lower. Let me show you why that is. We're going to look at the transmit IMD performance using a spectrum analyzer. For those of you who aren't familiar with transmit IMD, it's essentially uh, a measure of the nonlinearity of the system that you're using. And in the case of a single sideband transmitter, it's a good indication of whether your signal is going to cause splatter on adjacent frequencies or not. So let's take a look at that using a spectrum analyzer. Okay, let's talk about what we're seeing here. This is a spectrum analyzer view of the uh, two-tone transmit IMD performance of the transverter. What I've done is uh, feed in a 700 hertz and a 1900 hertz tone to the transmitter. Uh, if it was a perfect uh, transmitter, perfect PA, then the only thing we'd get out would be a 700 hertz and a 1900 hertz tone. But as you can see here, we've got uh, other products. And this is due to nonlinearities in the uh, amplifier. So what happens is you get uh, mixing products that fall uh, within the uh, transmitted passband. And so what we're looking at here is uh, the transmit IMD performance at the 2 watt level. This is with the transverter set for 2 watts. And you'll see that the third order products, which are, which are right here, are 27 point, uh, about 27.1 dB down from either of the two tones. Um, that's uh, the, the AWRL makes IMD measurements on transmitters and they actually spec the uh, intermod products uh, down from PEP. The, P, the peak envelope power of uh, this uh, signal would be 6 dB higher than either one of these two tones. So you would add uh, 6 dB, you'd, you'd basically have minus 33 dB below PEP for this. This is decent. Uh, there, some of the other uh, transverters out there are, are no better than this and some are worse. So at the 2 watt level you get a pretty clean signal and, uh, and that's a big help. Uh, but let's look at it when we crank the power on up and let you see what it looks like uh, at that point. 
Okay, I've raised the uh, transverter power up to uh, almost 10 watts, and as you can see here, this is the uh, this is the IMD TX IMD performance at the 10 watt level, and it's pretty bad. Um, as you can see here, the third order products are only down about 18 dB. Uh, even measuring by the ARRL method, that's uh, still only about 24 dB down. Um, if I measure over to the uh, fifth order product, uh, you can we can move over to that. Fifth order is uh, 33 dB down. That's that's really not all that good either. But it's really these third order products that are uh, that concern me the most. So this is why I don't recommend running the. Uh, uh, UT5 JCW transverter at the higher power levels. They spec uh, that it'll run 10 to 15 watts. At the 10 watt level, it's really not a very clean sideband signal. And so, uh, if you if you think about feeding this into an amplifier, where you're looking at uh, making things even worse, an amplifier is not going to make it better. You really need a cleaner signal before you're going to go into an amplifier with that. Well, that pretty much covers it at this point. You've got a working VHF or UHF transverter for a fairly low price. Now you may wonder uh, if it's really all that useful given that you don't really get 10 to 15 watts if you want a clean signal. I, I run mine at a little less than 2 watts. But the way that uh, I operate is I bought uh, an RF Concepts amplifier, a used one. This is a, a 2 meter amplifier, 2 watts in, 170 watts out. And they can be had for $150, $160, depending on uh, where you look. I bought uh, one off of uh, Eham, I think, and the other one from a local ham. But that, uh, driven with uh, one and a half watts, I get a really clean signal and about 150 watts out. So for uh, under $250 or so, you can uh, you end up with a pretty pretty nice station for VHF. Um, cheaper than buying uh, one of the pre-assembled transverters and considerably uh, more power. Um, if you get another transverter, for example, the Yellowcraft or the Downey's Microwave, uh, they run considerably less power and you may end up still having to buy an amplifier. So this is a good uh, setup if you want to start out small and uh, see if it's for you and go, for there, go from there. Uh, it's been suitable for me. I, I like the way it operates. Hope this was useful to you. Uh, I'm going to try to do some more videos on similar topics down the road if uh, if I get the time. But uh, hope you enjoy this, and I hope you enjoy the uh, transverter with the flex.